Kanal, and I'm Vanchika. Welcome back to another episode of The Friday Show. This week we'd like to focus on a new COVID-19 variant called Omicron. The first outbreak of the mutant was found in South Africa. We don't know a lot about Omicron yet, but scientists think that the vaccine and booster shot should help fight against it. But it still has people worried. 44 countries have imposed travel bans from foreign countries, especially South Africa. Japan and Israel have banned all foreign nationals from entering their countries. A large number of countries have reported Omicron cases, like Canada. The two questions that come up with virus variants are, does it spread more easily and does it cause more serious sickness? With the Alpha and Delta variants, the first was true, but not the second. Alpha, alpha was more easily spread than the first strain and then Delta spread even more rapidly. However, neither caused more serious illness or were more likely to spread among children. Not enough evidence on Omicron is available yet, but early signs show that it is possibly following this pattern. Early examinations of Omicron showed that it does have more mutations in its spike protein. The spike protein is the crown-looking part that gives coronavirus its name. Corona is crown in Spanish. The spike protein is what COVID uses to attach and make us sick. So more mutations means it is likely to be more contagious. Not enough evidence to know yet what, whether it will be more life-threatening. We have to wait and see. It will most likely be more easily spread than Delta, but not more dangerous. Experts say this is often the case with viruses. They change into different variants so they can better infect more hosts. If they become more deadly, the number of hosts goes down. It is interesting to note that Omicron has not evolved from a variant, but from the original virus itself. If it had evolved from a variant, it might be more vaccine resistant. Doctors in South Africa are finding severe cases of the virus to be mostly in people who are not vaccinated. New variants of viruses can be scary, but with vaccines and simple cautions like mask wearing in crowded spaces, they can be far less threatening. And now, some more interesting stories for you. As nations get more and more serious about climate change, airplanes are proving difficult to be more environmentally friendly, which don't currently enjoy many zero emissions developments. Now, however, a Formula One legend has partnered with the British Royal Air Force, or RAF, to create a zero emissions fuel alternative for these activities, and they were just rewarded with the Guinness World Record for the first ever flight using synthetic petroleum. It was the morning of November 2nd when an Icarus Icarus C-42 ultralight plane launched from Cotswold Airport to complete a short flight using zero emissions UL-91 fuel. UL-91 is just hydrogen extracted from water and carbon, done by machines powered by renewable electricity. These are then chemically changed to create zero emissions fuel, which the researchers say can be used for vehicles that cannot be powered by electricity. It, it's hard to imagine with the invention as important as zero emissions fuel. How quickly the process went through. The first planning only needed five months run by an F1 champion, Patty Lowe. The RAF sees it as an important in innovation towards the Air Force becoming carbon neutral by 2040. Other methods of greening av aviation have seen devices that turn atmospheric CO2 into jet fuel right on board the aircraft. While Carinata, a seed crop, could be used to create a more sustainable jet fuel alternative capable of reducing emissions by 68% and is being grown in the so American Southwest in a trial. Over Thanksgiving break, SpaceX launched NASA's DART mission on board a Falcon 9 rocket. DART stands for Double Asteroid Redirect Test. It will be a demonstration mission to see what happens when a rocket runs into an asteroid. The idea is to develop a system that can protect the Earth in the event that an asteroid is threatening to crash into us. DART's collision with the asteroid moon Dimorphos is set for October 20, 22. 
The launch of the small spacecraft from spacecraft from the launch of the small spacecraft from Vandenberg Space Force Base on the California coast took place on November 23rd at 10:21 Pacific time. This launch, the third flight of Falcon 9 stage first stage B1036, was the 26th Falcon 9 launch of 2021. It marked the start of a surge of launches in November and December with four additional Falcon 9 launches planned before the end of the year. The Falcon 9 lifted off with stage separation occurring Falcon 9 occurring some 2 minutes and 30 seconds into flight. The cool thing about the Falcon 9 rockets is that they are reusable and once they have taken their payload up, they return back down to the drone ship landing pads. The drone ship used a dart mission the drone ship used in the DART mission is called Of Course I Still Love You and was waiting and was waiting off the coast of Baja, California. The second stage engine went on to send DART to intercept the asteroid Didymus and its moon Dimorphos ten months from now. Oceanographers enjoyed a burst of color and life flowing forth in the annual spawning of coral from the Great Barrier Reef last week. Taking place after the November full moon, researchers witnessed a big year that inspired hope for the regrowing of the world's coral reefs. At the famous reef off the coast of Cairns, Queensland, Australia, different corals synchronized the release of their eggs, which look almost like the shaking of a giant snow globe. The coral offspring floated in waves of bright pink, purple, or blue, depending on the species. And this year, it was really impressive, unbelievably beautiful, spawning from last night. The party sure has started and the corals are going off. Reef Teach exclaimed on Twitter, posting a video, Billions of new coral babies born are good news for the reef. After a difficult few years, a lot of spawning is a sign that there is recovery underway, that the system is working. Reefs are around the world have been endangered due to pollution, sea temperatures rising, and coral bleaching. A good year of growth is encouraging because reefs are an important part of the ecosystem. Reefs are important habitats for ocean life. H.J. Heinz has been dominating the ketchup market on Earth for almost 150 years. Now the American food company wants to ensure future space travelers also to have access to ketchup. On November 9, 2021, the company unveiled its Mars Edition Ketchup. The unique recipe contains tomatoes grown under conditions similar to those on the Red Planet. The celestial sauce was created in collaboration with the Florida Institute of Technology's Alden Space Institute. A team of 14 scientists working at a lab called the Red House began by changing soil to mimic that on Mars. The Red Planet's nutrient-poor soil is full of toxic chemicals which need to be removed in order for plants to grow. They also had to imitate Mars' temperature environment. Mars is about 100 degrees Fahrenheit colder than Earth and its atmosphere primarily of carbon dioxide. The planet also does not get as much sunlight and has a gravity just 40% out of Earth. It took the researchers nine months to grow tomatoes fit for the approval of Heinz Tomato Masters, seven of the world's foremost experts on ketchup tomatoes. While the condiment will not be available in supermarket, Dr. Andrew Palmer, who led the Aldrin Space Institute team, believes the effort was well worth it. The expert believes the research not only promotes the likelihood of food production on Mars, but may also be helpful for growing crops in remote and inhospitable areas on Earth. The tomato harvest is not the only recent gardening victory for space travelers. On November 2, 2021, scientists at the International Space Station, ISS, enjoyed what American astronaut Megan MacArthur described as her best space tacos yet. They were made using fajita beef, rehydrated tomatoes, and artichokes, and most importantly, the first ever space-grown chilies. While the astronauts have previously grown crops like lettuce and radishes, peppers have proved difficult because they take longer to bear fruit. <laughs> Hopefully, meals in space will soon be similar to a meal on Earth. Hi, I'm Kanal with this week's weather report. Funnily, the weather has been getting better during the afternoons, even as we're heading into winter. The mornings have gotten chillier. But overall, we have an upcoming sunny week as well. The next few days will be sunny and cloudy-ish. Today will be sunny with a high of 67 degrees. Tomorrow will be getting a bit cloudy in the morning, but sunny in the afternoon. Sunday will also be sunny with a high of 67 degrees and a low of 50, 45 degrees. Nevertheless, don't forget, Christmas is coming, and you know what that means. Cold weather. Best to keep that beanie on in the mornings, and definitely grab a jacket. That's it for weather.
Hi, I'm Vanchka with this week's Brain Teasers. Last week's primary brain teaser was, what word starts with an E, ends with an E, and has a letter inside? The answer was an envelope, and no classes got it correct. Last week's intermediate brain teaser was, I get put on a ring, but no fingers. I used to stay still all the time, but nowadays I follow you around. What am I? The answer is a telephone, and room 408 got it correct. Now going on to this week's primary brain teaser, which is, how much dirt is in a hole that measures 4 feet by 4 feet by 5 feet? I repeat, how much dirt is in a hole that measures 4 feet by 4 feet by 5 feet? This week's intermediate brain teaser is, when John was 6 years old, he hammered a nail into his favorite tree to mark his height. 10 years later, at age 16, John returned to see how much higher the nail was. If the tree grew by 5 centimeters each year, how much higher would the nail be? I repeat, when John was 6 years old, he hammered a nail in, into his favorite tree to mark his height. 10 years later, at age 16, John returned to see how much higher the nail was. If the tree grew by 5 centimeters each year, how much higher will, would the nail be? That's it for Brain Teasers. Hey everyone, I'm Michelle with the Sports Report. A lot of stuff has happened over our Thanksgiving break, so let's go over it. Let's start with football. In the NFL, the 49ers beat the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Minnesota Vikings to get themselves a three-game winning streak. The Niners are 6-5, and five, third place and third place right now in the NFC West. They will play the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday. Now, basketball. The Warriors played really well, getting a seven-game winning streak after getting a seven-game winning streak going after beating the Nets, Cavaliers, Pistons, Raptors, 76ers, Trailblazers, and Clippers, but then lost to the Phoenix Suns at 96 to 104 on Tuesday. They will play the Suns again at 7 p.m. They will play the Suns again today at 7 p.m. Elsewhere in the NBA, superstar LeBron James missed the Lakers last game because of COVID policy. He will be out for a few games. Now, let's move on to hockey. The San Jose Sharks have built a good two-game win streak after beating the Black Hounds and the Devils. They, they will play the, Island, the Islanders, Islanders, unfortunately. It was after the filming of this report. They will play the New York Rangers today. That's all for sports. That's our show. We hope you enjoyed the Friday show. You can subscribe on YouTube or look for the link in your Google Classroom. We also wanted to add that Mrs. Monroe, alongside the student council, organized a sock drive called Sock Timber. You can only donate brand new socks. You must hand them to your teacher. Our Forest Park goal is 2,000 socks. The last day to donate is December 17th. And remember, this is completely optional. But if you want to help people that can't afford to buy items like socks, donate. See, See you next week. week. Bye. Bye.